Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So for today's video, I'm going to be making this Friends themed customized pencil case. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so we're gonna start off in design space and this is a project that I've already designed. I've actually done it, it's such a simple way to do it. It's such a simple project. Uh, so I'm just gonna go here and go edit project. Oops, not edit project details, that's not what I wanted. We're going to go customize just so you can see it. Got to do a customize anyway. Um, I like making it big. So all I've got here is I've downloaded the font that the friends thing used. I got it off of I think it's what the font. Um, it's a free one for personal use. Obviously, if I was going to sell this, I'd have to buy the font. I'm just doing it for me. So in that respect, I think I'm okay but just double check everything before you download them, especially before you sell anything. Anything that's going to be got connotations with a show, whether it's Disney, whether it's Friends, whether it's anything, if, you have, if you're gonna use it, make sure you've got the license because it's, it's a very bad thing to get caught doing that. So because I'm just using this one for me, I think I'm okay. So this is the Gabriel Weiss Friends font. So I've imported that onto my computer and therefore then put it into Design Space. And then all I've done is just printed a couple, sorry, added a couple of the circles. So I've just done red, blue, and yellow. For now, they're just placeholders anyway, because once we put this into, once we cut it out, obviously the Cricut doesn't necessarily know what color we're gonna print things. So in that respect. Um, the only thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna add, because I have tested this before, and it, it worked, definitely worked, but I just want to add in a couple of extra things here. So I'm just gonna, add a couple of sets of the dots and it's just because when I cut this out it's such a small area you might as well cut a few more dots out just in case you make a mistake so then I'm going to go make it and it's going to take a second and it's going to sort my mats out by color now I have made this so that this all cuts together so hold on I'm going to come back here for a second so this um, these have all been attached so if I hit here and go detach You'll see then where it's each word is one by one and I've just straightened them out. Because I want it to cut with them all, I'll actually show you. So we'll go make it. If I did it this way, it's going to cut these like this. So it's going to try and cut it in the smallest amount possible. That's the way Cricut runs. It wants to save you the most amount of product. Because I want this to be exactly the way it is, I want this to be as simple for me as I can possibly make it. I'm going to put all of my text together, select them all together and go attach. And that's going to then, when I go make it, it's going to have it in the positioning that I want it all. So then I'm going to go continue, I'm going to get my maker ready and we're going to have a look at some vinyl. So the vinyl we're going to be using today is the Cricut uh, heat transfer vinyl. This is the permanent bond kind, I have the white and then I have, this one's called the rainbow sampler. I got this one from Spotlight. Um, I just felt the colours, the red, the blue and the yellow actually suited really nicely for the colours I wanted to use. It was much easier than buying the whole roll of each colour because I'm really only going to be using this tiny little amount. And then the white one's obviously just the white one. So we're going to be using therefore the Everyday Iron-On. So I'm going to go ahead and select that on my as my material in Design Space. It's going to tell me what blade I need to use and all the similar things which I've done. And then we can go ahead and put these onto our map. So it's telling me I'm going to start with the white one. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my white, hold on, get my white vinyl first and some scissors. And I'm going to cut out how much I need. Now if you hover, just going back over to the screen for a second, if you hover over the map, it'll show you where the size is. So for me, it's telling me that this needs to be about six centimeters high and about 18 centimeters wide. So I've still got the plastic on here. I'm going to put this onto the centimetre side because that makes it a bit easier. This is obviously not straight because when I cut vinyl, I can never cut it straight. It just, I, I just don't know how to do that. So I'm just working it roughly where the 18 is. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to cut down just a little bit. And how much did I say it needed to be? Six. So it needs to cut about here. So I'm just cutting out how much I need. You can just put the whole thing on there and then you can pull off the excess. It's whichever you're happier doing. I'm quite happy to do it this way. And you just, you 
do sort of, you do waste a little bit, but it's all right. So roll that back up again. We'll go ahead then and stick this down. So for this, we need to make sure that we put the mirror on. So I'm going back to the thing and I'm flicking edit and I'm going mirror because we're using heat transfer vinyl, everything needs to be mirrored. So I'm going done. And it truly reminds you when you do your, your um, everyday iron on, it says make sure mirror is turned on and the iron on material is face, is shiny side down. So I've got the shiny side there. We'll take that off our mat. We'll go ahead and stick, stick this to our mat. Sometimes I need to spin it around so it's in the right spot. This is where you'll be able to see if you've cut it to the right length, which I definitely have. I'm gonna have some spare there, but that's okay. Mirror's definitely turned on. I can check edit again and go mirror and go done. That's fine. And then I'm going to go and put this into my makeup. I'm gonna take you with my iPhone here. So take you over to my makeup. This is how clever I'm getting with my cameras. <laughs> and then we're just gonna hit the load button. And it'll load it in. Think about it for a second. And then it'll start going with the flash of the cricket button. And we can hit that and it'll start making those words. vinyl doesn't bend as much so I don't need to worry so much it's hard to see at the moment when you peel this off you'll be able to see everything all right then it comes to the colors now I've already got some little bits cut out because I won't need any more than this because the dots are so small um, but I just cut little squares out of here that's all it is now there is a way and I'm still learning with my Cricut so I'm not going to attempt it today but there is a way that I could put this all on one mat and cut it out of three different colors all at the same time because these are small little things that would be a lot easier I admit but just for today we're just going to do this the, the boring way so I'm just sticking this at the top because I know it's going to be in that top corner I'm again just checking my mat making sure they're there so it's going to be up into about four centimeters so definitely going to fit i also need to mirror these because they are little circles you really don't need to mirror things that are obviously a mirror image if it's a circle if it's a square if it's something very simple you don't have to worry so much about the mirror but for the sake of it i'm going to do it and again making sure that this is um, shiny side down so i'm going to head and cut the yellow the blue and the red dots and then we'll come back last one up off the mat this is the way you should always pull them off your mat you should always bend the mat not the not the item especially important when you're cutting cardstock and things like that because it does tend to bend or warp your paper and we don't want to do that and then always make sure you put your clear mat back on this stops it getting dusty or dirty keeps the stick on it longer done we can pull in all the bits and we can get out our weeding tools now I like to use a little picky tool one that's straight one that's got a curve to it and then I like to use my tweezers because for me the tweezers are so much easier so the good thing about heat transfer vinyl is it is so easy to pick up there's no sticking to it there's no pain in the bottom to it it's just you get your hook underneath it and it really will just pull out don't pull it off really fast because you want to obviously make sure that the cut's been good and it's not gonna it's not going to miss a spot so just pull it slowly but generally I find that it works pretty easily so just pulling it off slowly and then that bit can all go in the rubbish just bring my little bin over for the weeding part and then you can get in just pull out any of the other bits that you sort of have missed 
This is where I like the tweezers because they can get right in the little spots and I can pick them up. Weeding tools, tweezers, it doesn't really matter. It's whatever you feel works best for you. There is no stick to these though, so they're not gonna sort of stick to your hand or stick to the table. There's no stickiness on the vinyl at all. So just try and make sure you put it in the bin as quick as you can, just so that it's easy to clean up. Now, like I said, this one with the white is a little bit hard sometimes to see where your cut lines are. So you just have to sort of pick it up and move it around to get where that line is. But once you can see it, you generally can pick up the little insides reasonably easy. There we go. All right, now for the dots, I still want to save a little bit of this vinyl that I have used. So I'm just going to cut off where the little dots are because I don't need all five either just remember that I, I cut extras in case I messed up you don't need to do that but I'm just always a bit careful I think it was better to have a couple of spares as opposed to having to go back and cut them again I'm just trimming that out I'm thinking of ways that I can use some of this sort of little bits of vinyl I'm sure there are things I can do I'm sort of thinking like maybe a patchworky kind of quilt Thing, and this is where I want to play with being having multiple colors on the on the Cricut mat at once I want to I want to experiment with that but we haven't got to that yet so I'm just pulling off all of the excess on all five not all five all three of the colors here because I want to make this as easy for doing the press as possible so I'm going to move the dots onto um, onto the word carrier page so that I don't have to put these down one by one because I'm scared of messing up the vinyl. So this is where I'm grabbing my tweezers again. I'm going back to my original design and just looking at what I've done. So I'm picking up the little blue dot. I'm being very careful because I don't want to warp or damage the vinyl at all. I'm just picking it up. Still making sure it's sticky side down. Well, it's the same side down so I haven't moved anything. And just placing it down on that transfer sheet and then just sticking it down so it'll stick it's not a problem at all you sort of need to make sure you don't damage the vinyl as you're picking it up or spin it over because if you do that you'll, you won't have the glue so I'm just going to go ahead and put all of these down I'm just running blue red yellow and I'm just trying to make the dots as straight as I can you could grab a um, a ruler or something here just to make sure they're straight I'm actually kind of happy with that and I just flip it over and have a look I'm just gonna grab the green in so you can sort of see what that looks like I'm quite happy with how straight that is actually let's just do it on the mat so yeah that's pretty good actually so then you do the exact same thing <laughs> Just picked up all of my dots. Uh, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the ones on the bottom once I've retrieved them from the base of my mat. Just having a look at that and seeing if I'm happy with the way that's lined up, which I am. So now grab the easy press out and start getting this worked out to be on the pencil case. Okay, so before we get going with the easy press, I just need to check what temperature I need this. So I'm just going to my Cricut heat guide that I have saved here. This is the pencil case we're going to be using. It's one that I got from Kmart. It's just a simple gray, but I thought it looked really cool. Um, and would work really well with this. So all I'm doing first is I'm just double checking, getting all the fluff out, just check, double checking what it's made out of. So most products, I won't say all products, but most products will have a, a tag on the inside or the outside that'll say what the material is. So this one here is polyester. So when we go to put this all in the, in the heat guide, we're gonna know what material to pick. So the heat transfer material that we used was the everyday iron-on, and it was just the regular kind, so we can just click that one. And the base material, we can go through all of these different things that they can be. Like we said, it's polyester. So we'll just click on that. We'll 
we'll say we've got the easy press mat I'm gonna say I've got a towel only because we are gonna have the mat out as well but because of the funny shape of this and because I've got the big easy press not the easy press mini which don't worry I'm it's on my list um, I'm gonna use a towel but it would work either way actually we're gonna have a look at what the difference is so I'm gonna go apply and it's gonna tell me I'm gonna do 165 for 30 seconds if I do the mat, it tells me 155 for 30 seconds. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do the heat this time. I think that's probably better. So we'll do 165 for 30 seconds. So we'll turn the easy press on, we'll turn the temperature up. There we go, so 165. Timer is for 30 seconds and we'll just leave that there to heat up and I'll get my mat and the prep and everything ready and then we'll go. So here's something very important that I learnt the last time I did this, because I did test this first to make sure that it would work. I do like to do that occasionally. Um, big thing, make sure this plastic's out, because it will melt underneath your heat press, <laughs> which I should have known, but for some reason I didn't. Um, and you don't want to do that, so make sure that's out of the way. I'm just moving some bits and pieces here so I've got a little bit more room. Now the towel we're going to put in here is not a towel towel. It's one of, it's actually one of Charlotte's um, burping towels. It works really well for this, so I'm just opening it up. I'm seeing how wide this needs to be, so yeah, we'll fold this up a little bit more. Go, okay, and then I'm just going to roll it it's not a hard roll, it's just a light roll. That might still be too big, yes it is. Because we need something solid on the inside that we can press this down onto. And it doesn't quite work. It just doesn't quite work without it. Oops, how have I got the little blue dots? Let's just go in half, it'll be fine, or nearly half. And we'll do that light roll. Okay, and then we're gonna stuff this into the pencil case. Now if I had the Easy Press Mini, this would be a little bit easier. I don't, and I want to be able to do this without it. So I can do it, I know I can do it because I've tried, um, but just a, a hint, the Easy Press Mini would do a much better job of this. So I'm making this flat, I'm making sure I can see where the top is, and then I'm just going to put my um, design down on here just to sort of see if I know what that I know where I like it. There goes my easy press. There we go. And then I'm gonna follow the instructions that are on my easy press guide. So it says preheat the easy press to 165. We've done that. Place the polyester on a clean towel. It, it's on the clean towel underneath. And then you preheat the polyester for five seconds. So we're gonna put this on here first and preheat it. So straight down onto that. One, two, three, Put that back over there. Whoops, caught out of the way. And then it says press the iron on face down, liner side up. So I'm just putting that down because it's a little bit warm, it'll hold that a little, not a lot. No, it's not going to do it today, but it's okay. Just making sure I'm happy with where it is. And then we put place this with light pressure for 100 for 30 seconds. So we're going to put it straight down. So pull it off. And then it says to flip it over and press down on the other side as well. So we are going to do that even though sort of a little bit more of a complicated design. It just says for five seconds. I'm just going to try and avoid the zip just push that down actually no we'll just do it one two three four five so that didn't do any damage and then it says to flip it back over again and then slowly remove the liner when it's cool to touch so I'm going to leave this here I'm going to set a timer so I can tell you exactly how long this took for it to cool down and then we'll go ahead and peel this off Alright, 
So I'm two minutes into this. I'm going to keep it going. I'm just going to turn the heat the heat press back on. There's just a corner here I can see that I've missed. That's fine. It's not an issue. I'm just going to go back and restick it. Just sort of be a little bit more. I'm going to turn that off. Like the timer's still going, but actually it doesn't really need to be going anymore. Just letting this heat back up to 165. Now just while we're sitting here chatting, so the dots that were left over, all I'm gonna do is just stick that down to the back of the leftover um, vinyl, because that way I'm not gonna lose them and I know where to go looking for them. And then I have a drawer that I keep all of my vinyl bits in, because I don't like to throw too much away if I can avoid it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this, I'm just not gonna do the full 30 seconds again. I'm just gonna sort of stick it there. Actually, let's do it for 30 seconds. It won't hurt it. I'm just making sure that I'm right on this edge because I think I might have missed it before. I don't know why I wiggle. I don't need to wiggle, but I feel like I need to. I'm just gonna stick that back over. I'm just gonna push that down. I think the glue hasn't quite stuck or I've pulled it up. So that's my mistake. You guys love seeing when I make boo-boos. it now and just hopefully it all sticks just feel like it's not quite on this edge for whatever reason that that a is not sticking down the way I want it to but I'm not going to keep playing with it because I feel like I'm gonna make it worse let's just see what happens Been a bit bright I might have been able to use like a gray or something I didn't have a gray so I just used the white I had but you could obviously do this in a bunch of different colors just pulling this slowly there's no rush with this okay so this is where the edge I'm worried about okay so the T is a little bit not quite ah, no now it's fine Sometimes it just takes a second. And there we have, <laughs> that's so cool. I'm so happy. I was really worried it wouldn't work guys, but it has worked. I'm gonna turn the easy press off because I've had it on just in case. If you wanted to now, you could do another, another quick press, but quite honestly, I think that's gonna be fine. And there we have my brand new Friends Inspired pencil case. That's cost me, okay, when you count the cricket and everything, it's cost, it's cost a bit of money. But I think that's really, really cool. I think, oh, just, and you could do this with a bunch of different things. So you could obviously do the, the pencil case, the one with all the pens, um, or you could do, um, like, oh, I'm trying to think of things you could do. You could do a t-shirt, you could have, um, oh, baby things I could make for Charlotte, like, um, you're my lobster. Oh my God, that would be so cute. Um, <laughs> I go baby things. Um, you could also do like just normal t-shirts. We were on a break. So much you could do that's so, so simple. And it's, it's really just a font. And you can download fonts from the, web, the internet without too much of a problem. Um, it's just a font. Um, and then just decorate it up. Or you could make yourself anything you like in design space, like we were on a break. There's, there's, there's lots you could do. Um, I'm just gonna give this a couple, like a day or so to kind of sit in its position. I could probably put something, put that cloth back in it and leave it there just so it kind of gets its position back because we have squished it a little bit. But the zips and everything still work. I haven't done any damage whatsoever to the front or the back with all of that heat. I just, I just love it. I'm so happy. 
I'm so happy. I did get another pencil case. So this one was the obviously the grey one. Uh, there is another one that I got that's a denim kind of one, and I'm thinking of things I can do for that one as well. So you might see that pop up on Instagram. So if you want to see what I do with that one, please follow me over there. Uh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it, and let me know if you want more Cricut projects, Easy Press projects. I do have. I do have some infusible ink. I have done an infusible ink project here before on my channel, um, but I'd love to give it another shot. So let me know if you'd like to see that one as well. Hope you guys have an absolutely awesome rest of your day and a fantastic weekend, and I will catch you again in my next video. Sending lots of huggles. Bye.